Hi church! This is going to be a different kind of sermon. I spent the week planning a fun adventure through our whole service um, with me telling the story to my four-year-old, um, Liv. But when it came time to tell the story, I asked her, do you want to hear a story? And at that moment she said no. Well, do you want to talk about Jesus for just a little bit? No. Do you want to wonder about big questions with me? No. Do you want to help me make a movie for our church? No. So of course, we respect and respond to her voice that is incredibly important. Um, respecting boundaries is part of welcoming, right? So you get a sermon designed for a four-year-old, but you get no four-year-old, only a sleeping baby. Anyway, um, I invite you, as I have many times in person, to invite your inner child to come forward, to come close, to listen to a story. Now, what happened in that story we just read? There are four things that I hear Spirit calling my attention to. I'd like to share them with you. One, Jesus and his friends went out into the wilderness to meet with God. And when people heard that Jesus was out in the wilderness, they went to the wilderness to find Jesus. Two, Jesus and his friends were feeling very tired, but they paid close, close attention to what the people around them needed. Three, everyone made sure that their own body was nourished. And four, everyone made sure that everyone else's body was nourished as well. So let's remember the story and think about those four things. Those are four things that are, I hope we as a church family will remember in the month to come. We'll come back to this story again and again, looking at those four things. Jesus went into the wilderness. Now, the wilderness is a very dangerous place. It can be hard to find food or drink. It's easy to get lost in the wilderness. You don't generally go into the wilderness unless you have to. And yet there is something sacred about the wilderness. Many times in our sacred stories, people go into the wilderness to slow down and focus and come close to God. I like to imagine myself right here, breathing carefully, listening to spirit, going into the wilderness to come so close to God and to create space for God to some cl come so close to me. Sometimes people choose to go into the wilderness to meet with God. And sometimes something happens and people don't choose to go into the wilderness. They just have to. But somehow they find God there. It's a scary time and they worry about being lost. God finds them. Sometimes these last few months have felt like we're in a wilderness, that we had to leave to go into a wilderness even though we've stayed in our homes. I've remembered these stories of the people in the wilderness. Sometimes this feels like a wilderness. It can be scary. I can worry about getting lost. I can worry that people I love will get lost. But then I remember that God is here in the wilderness and God finds us in the wilderness. So Jesus went to the wilderness to be with God. And people knew that he was there and they knew there was something special about God, about Jesus. So when they heard he was in the wilderness, they went to the wilderness too. They wanted to be with Jesus. They knew this would be a very special journey into the wilderness where God would find them. Some, I'm sure, packed meals, and others, I'm sure, did not. It was important to be with Jesus, so some left without preparing. So many people came, person after person after person. There were so many people that the Bible tells us, or the people who study the Bible tell us it was probably Everyone, almost everyone, from all of the villages around this wilderness. It says that there were 5,000 men and women and children besides. And it doesn't even mention how many of our non-binary siblings. This is a good place to pause and remember that our sacred story is full of holy wisdom, but that it is not the fullness of holy wisdom. We know that God loves women and children and our non-binary siblings. So when our sacred story leaves something out, it is good for us to remember them. And remember, they are a part of the story as well. So there were many people. They had not prepared to take care of themselves in the wilderness. 
Jesus and his friends noticed that they did not have enough food, but that they would need food. I wonder if Jesus worried that he couldn't feed the hungry people. He didn't have enough food for himself and his friends, really. How could he feed that many people? I don't know if Jesus was worried, but I do know that his friends were worried. I know that his friends did not think that they could nourish that big of a crowd. Jesus saw the need. His friends saw the need, but they didn't think they could meet the need. Oh, sometimes I see needs and my heart is sad. It feels like my heart is sinking in the sand. I could never meet this need. But sometimes we just don't know how to meet a need. Holy Wisdom tells us from the Talmud, tells us, do not be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief. Do justly now, love mercy now, walk humbly now. You are not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to abandon it. Sometimes we are daunted by the need we see, but we are obligated to find a way to step forward and love and welcome all the same. We simply see that there is a need and we talk to Creator, we talk to Spirit, we talk as Jesus' friends did, to Jesus, and we take the next step. So Jesus' friends gathered what food they had, and Jesus said a prayer over the food and shared it with everyone. It wasn't much food at all, but as they passed the food around, everyone had exactly what they needed, and everyone made sure that everyone else had exactly what they needed. It's like that song that we sometimes sing. There is enough, there is enough, there is enough, Lord, enough and some to share. Maybe food appeared from nowhere. Maybe food stretched so big that it would meet everybody's need. Or maybe everybody shared the little bit that they had and they found that when everyone shared their little bit, there indeed was enough and some to share. Sometimes the problems we see in the world seem far too big for us to even try to help. But sometimes when we show up to help, something magical happens and our little bit of help joins with another little bit of help and another little bit of help so that we can all sing, there is enough, there is enough, there is enough, Lord, enough and some to share. So 5,000 men and who knows how many women and children and non-binary siblings ate a very nice meal together. And you know what? There was plenty left for Jesus and his friends to also nourish themselves. So, Jesus and his friends went out into the wilderness. And then people came out to the wilderness to find Jesus. They went out to the wilderness to be with God, and people went out to the wilderness to be with Jesus. Two, Jesus and his friends may have been feeling tired, but they paid close attention to what the people around them needed. Three, Everyone made sure that their own body was nourished. Four, everyone made sure that everyone else's body was also nourished. I wonder how Spirit will grow these seeds of holy wisdom in you and me and our church family this month. I cannot wait to find out. Over the next month, we're going to listen very closely to this story. We're going to have many ways for each of us to reflect and to share what we need while we are physically distanced for however long that might, ne might need to be, however long we need to be distanced in order to love our neighbors. As we do, I hope that we will re reflect on these four things. One, being in the wilderness is a season. It is a way to come close to God. Two, paying attention to the needs of the people in the world around us. Three, considering what we need to be spiritually nourished ourselves, what you need to be spiritually nourished. And four, considering what others need to be spiritually nourished. And at the heart of all these discernments in this period, um, it's, it, we approach this similar to how we approach scripture. We always ask, what is God up to? Church, what is God up to? Where do you see God on the move? 
How do we participate in the kind of story that will be told for generations and shape a loving and just ethos for the world and for the church? We have some very big questions to sit with. And this is why I wanted to begin that work of discernment with a children's version of a story. We need to remember how spacious God's story is as we listen closely for our place in that story. I love you, church, and I look forward to where this discerning journey will take us throughout this month. If you have questions about how this journey will unfold, feel free to email me, pastor at welcometablecc.org. Um, but look to your inbox in the next week or so for information on how we will discern together. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for bringing your inner child. May God bless that inner child as we discern together. Amen.